Today we're going to be testing out the 0 0.0 Energy Titan. And previously in a video we went over the basic features, but in today's video we are going to try to kill it. I want to get it into safety mode. Previously it passed all of my tests, but I want to push it to the limit. So we're going to throw this into the solar shed and see what we can do. Now we have solar connected. We have 540 watts of solar over here and 270 watts of solar over here. So it's still early morning, but we are charging with 400 watts of solar. Now we're gonna add the AC chargers. I also depleted the battery because I want the maximum charge rate. And they sent out two AC chargers. They're capable of 600 watts each and I connected them right here and right here. So let's turn them on and see what the charge rate is. And look at that, we are charging at 1,300 watts. And at that rate, we can charge up both of these batteries in only three hours, which is very impressive. So that's what we're going to do. And while the Titan is charging quickly, we can do a temperature stress test. So we're going to put the inverter on full load at three kilowatts and see what happens with the charge rate and see if it changes. And now we're pulling 1,500 watts over here and 1,300 watts over here. And the net loss from the battery is 1.9 kilowatts. So we're gonna see how long we can run this for. So at around three minutes, it shut down the inverter. So it does not like that. So this is like obviously a maximum rate test. And if you're charging with only solar, this probably wouldn't happen. So let's test that out. Let's let it cool down, turn off the AC chargers, and we'll run the inverter at maximum capacity. Now we are repeating the same test, but we are only charging from solar and not from the AC chargers. And the Titan has been able to cool down for a bit. So let's see how long it can power this load for. The inverter turned off at three minutes again. So it does not like maximum discharge while charging. Absolutely not, whether it's solar or AC chargers. Now we have zero charging sources and we are pulling 2.9 to three kilowatts. And we are also timing it. I'm hoping that it will run this load indefinitely. Oh, no way. So at two minutes and 40 seconds, it cut off. I would consider that that test is a failure. It should be able to pull 3000 watts continuous while charging. The next test, we're gonna charge it up and we're gonna run a lower load. So instead of calling it a 3000 watt generator, let's see if we can instead call it like a 2000 or 2500 watt generator while it's charging with AC input. Now we have all of the chargers connected, an 850 and an 850 watt load, and a small air conditioner that pulls 430 watts consistently. So we're gonna see how long it can power this test for. And we have the stopwatch going and we're at two minutes already. So this has been running for an hour and we're at 800 watts and 900 watts and we are still running the air conditioner and it seems to like this just fine. We are still charging at maximum rate with both chargers. So it passed this test. After I disconnected the loads, we're charging at 1.3 to 1.4 kilowatts. Now the Titan is fully charged and we're gonna do a load test. We're gonna push the inverter to the limit until it turns itself off. And hopefully it will be longer than three minutes this time. So we're pulling 1400 watts over here and 1400 watts over here. And it shows 3.2 kilowatts at the battery. And we got three minutes again, so it does not like max continuous load at all. And we are not charging right now. So we're going to reduce the load to, I don't know, 2,500 watts and see what it does. This one lasted for four and a half minutes. It should have passed this test. It we might be having a problem with not having enough batteries. So I'm gonna check the manual and see what the minimum is for this discharge rate with the inverter. And the manual states that you can have 1500 watts of continuous power output with a single battery. And we have two batteries, so we should theoretically be able to power 3000 watts. The final problem it could be is these extension cords. So I'm gonna connect the heat guns directly to the meter and then run them inside the shed and see what happens. It lasted for three minutes and 50 seconds, guys. I'm pretty disappointed. I think this is like a 2000 watt inverter. Let's try that instead. Oh, I won't turn on. I think it's too hot now. 
All right, I'm gonna let it cool down then. What a bummer. So now we're pulling about 2,000 watts. Let's see if it can handle this. So it ran the load for an hour and 33 minutes. We're gonna get it out of safety mode by charging it with an AC charger. And now that it's charging, we're gonna connect a air conditioner and see if it can run it right now, even though the battery is low. The air conditioner is running and it's charging, so everything's working. That was very easy to get out of safety mode. Now I'm gonna let this run for a few days with the air conditioner and solar power and then see what happens. It's been 24 hours and the Titan has run the air conditioner flawlessly. So, so far so good, but let's give it a couple more days. So fast forward 60 hours later and the Titan is still powering the air conditioner and charging with solar. So, so far so good, it has passed this test. Now we're gonna test the car charging port by connecting this input to the output of the EcoFlow Delta cigarette lighter adapter. We're gonna check how much current is going through these conductors. We've got 18.6 amps. So the Titan will charge very quickly. You do not wanna hook it up to a cigarette lighter in your car. You should run your own wires directly to the Titan from the alternator or the battery. Yeah, these wires are already getting pretty warm. I had no idea they can charge that quickly. Now we're gonna test the battery expansion port and this is somewhat experimental and it's not mentioned much in the manual. It does say in the fine print that you can connect lithium iron phosphate 8S cell configuration to this port. And over here we have an 8S 14 kilowatt hour battery pack. So I made my own cable. I also emailed them this morning, but I didn't get a response. It's pretty early. So we're just gonna connect it and see how much current flows in which way it's flowing and we're gonna wear eye protection because this might be pretty dangerous and to be on the safe side I'm gonna connect it through a 70 amp DC circuit breaker and the negative ground bus and I want you guys to understand that this is a bad idea these are at very different voltages with very different discharge curve characteristics because we have two different kinds of chemistries so usually I do not recommend this but this is supposed to be a battery expansion port so there should be some form of current limiting and regulation so yeah, let's try it and see what happens. <laughs> I'm so scared, you guys. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. What? I think it's working. All right, let's see how much current is flowing through. We have 15 amps. That's great, it actually works. I was really scared, wow. So on previous solar generator models like the Energy Kodiak, it just connected the two batteries in parallel and it was extremely dangerous. But this one has some form of regulation. This is so cool. So right now, solar is coming into the Titan and it's charging up my solar shed. So I could actually leave it like this and run all of my inverters. It would take a long time to charge up, but if it charges 24 hours a day, it would be good to go. This is incredible. I can't believe it actually works. Guys, this is pretty cool. I really like that feature. So besides the inverter not pulling the full continuous rated load, everything else seems to work great. But yeah, I'm really bummed about the inverter. That seems to be the only downside that I can find. And keep in mind, that's 15 amps at 24 volts. So that's like 30 amps at 12 volts. So that's a pretty good rate for a typical battery charger, especially with this gauge of wire. And yeah, these wires are getting pretty warm. It's smart to have a circuit breaker or some kind of OCPD when you use this though. I think just to be on the safe side, any form of battery to battery connection, you wanna have OCPD for sure, even if it is regulated. So what should we think about the Titan? Unfortunately, it did not pass our inverter test but in every other regard it worked really well and I think this is a very common problem with these inverters on these small solar generators because you have so many boards that are stacked so close together I mean we have two massive individual MPPTs right next to a huge inverter circuit so the inverter circuit is probably a 3,000 watt board and then you have a 6,000 watt surge and when running a continuous load it will create a lot of heat and these systems typically have over temperature sensors all over the place and it will go into protection mode. So I would not consider it a 3000 watt inverter. I would consider it instead from our testing a 2200 watt 
continuous inverter. Maybe I am wrong and the manual was wrong and maybe you need three batteries, but I'm gonna find out after I post this video, I'm gonna send an email to the company. But this seems to be a very common issue in the market. Um, a lot of the other generators seem to do this. The EcoFlow lineup, pretty much all of them have over temperature. The Kodiak, I mean, it cut off after a couple minutes. The only one that does not cut off and you can run the full continuous load is the Goal Zero. They have the best inverters. They actually have patents for their inverters and I love their inverter output. But Goal Zero in every other way is pretty horrible in my opinion. The MPPT, the voltage input, the efficiency that I tested in previous videos, the battery type and size, um, the charge cycle life and how it's cycled, the weight. So yeah, I do not see Goal Zero as an option at all. I do not like Goal Zeros. I do like hacking Goal Zeros by adding your own Victron solar charge controller and I have a whole other tutorial on that. So personally, I would never buy a Goal Zero, but they have some amazing inverters. I do like, whoever designed that thing, I like what you did. It works perfectly. I've actually pushed over its max rated continuous and it just kept powering it. So very impressive. And I just got a text message while filming this video. I texted one of the distributors of the Titan saying that I can't seem to get um, the 3000 watts continuous to work. Have you tested that before? And he said, yeah, I've done it multiple times. That's weird. And he said, is the load on one side of the 110 volt plugs or split between the two sections? And I split it between the two sections. I actually mentioned that in the first video, so. And yesterday, another distributor asked one of his customers to test it, and he pulled 2,700 watts continuously. So yeah, maybe I got a bad unit, and that would be very unfortunate. So it's really hard for me to recommend something when it doesn't work instantly, but a lot of people that have bought it love the Titan. Um, there are two distributors that I know of and they haven't had a single return. So it seems like a good unit, but I'm pretty mad right now that the inverter did not work at max output. Um, everything else seemed to work and I love the battery expansion and also the 12 volt charging. But yeah, I'm just so bummed about that. So I'm gonna let you guys know in the community section probably what happens. I hope they can fix this problem. Maybe I need another battery pack and they need to update their manual, but I could not get 3000 watts. I couldn't get 2,600 watts. I couldn't get anywhere near that. I was getting like 2,200 and then 2,000 I could run continuously with full charging. So I hope you guys like this video. Again, another failure, just as always. I try to make these products work, like I really try. And I just run into so many problems. But yeah, the Titan I think is still cool, but I'm just so bummed about the inverter. That is the only thing that I dislike. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I will talk to you later, bye.